So in the last video, we learned how to look at a linear function and see if it's a factor of a polynomial. And to do this, we use synthetic division. So essentially what we do is take this linear factor and, um, or linear expression and divide it into this polynomial. And if it divides evenly, like we have no remainder, then we know it has to be a factor because it divided evenly. Um, let's see if this ends up being a factor. So what we do to do synthetic division is we make our box and the number that goes in this box is always um, the zero for the, the linear uh, expression. So if I take x plus three set equal to zero, so that's what I mean by finding the zero is you set your expression equal to zero, then solve for x. And so x is gonna be equal to negative three. So the zero here for x is negative three. Or some people do it pretty quickly by just looking at the linear expression and using the opposite, um, the opposite sign. And so that would be a negative three instead of a positive three. And so from here, let's look at our highest degree here is x to the third. So I'm gonna do my labeling. So this is gonna be x to the third, x squared. And then you just wanna keep decreasing the power until you reach the constant. From here, put the number in front of the um, x's. So this is x to the first, uh, oh, a one in front of x to the third, so one underneath, then another one for x squared, a negative 30 for x to the first power, and a 41 for uh, the constant. So what you wanna do is always bring down the first number, and then you multiply the bottom numbers with the number inside the box. So one times negative three is negative three. And then we always add vertically. So one minus three gives us negative two, and then take your bottom number again, multiply by the number in the box. So negative two times negative three, positive six, and then you add vertically. So negative 30 plus six gives me negative 24. Negative 24 times negative three mm, looks like a positive number. It's positive 72. And I'm doing this with a calculator, by the way. Uh, and then I, if I add vertically, 41 plus 72 gives me 113. So I'm nowhere near close to having a remainder of zero. By the way, the remainder is always the last digit. And in this case, our remainder is 113. So this did not divide nicely. So I know that x, x plus three is not a factor. And so if it's not a factor, I have to move on and try a different factor. Um, but in this case, they just want me to check if this is a factor so I can stop my, the problem here. So on the next problem here, it wants us to determine how many zeros does this equation have or this function has. So to determine is how many zeros there are, it's asking like basically how many solutions would you have? If you had to find X, how many X's would you have? Well, in this case, if we're looking for the number of solutions, by the way, another way to say zeros or solutions is roots. How many roots does X have is also another vocabulary we've learned. So it looks like based off of this equation, the highest power here is three. So you always look at your highest power and that determines how many solutions or how many zeros you have. So in this case, I'm gonna have a three. So we're gonna have three um, zeros. And the reason why I know this is we always look at the highest exponent for x or the degree of the function. So we look at our equation, find the highest power. In this case, it's x to the third. That's gonna tell us how many solutions there are or how many uh, zeros you're going to have. All right, let's move on to what we're gonna be learning in this video specifically. So we've learned how to use synthetic division to help us factor. And the reason why we want to be able to factor these polynomial is because we wanna solve for X. We wanna find uh, those solutions that we're looking for and factoring makes it easier. So one of the benefits with synthetic divisions is that it helps us check if a factor um, is a part of a polynomial. So we can check if something's a factor and this helps leads us to finding all the factors or could potentially lead us to finding all the factors, which is good. So once we have all the factors, then we can set them equal to zero to solve for X. And finding X is actually helping us finding those X intercepts. So essentially, um, let's go over roots, zeros, and solutions again. So I've mentioned this before, but anytime you hear roots, zeros, or solutions, they mean all the same thing. They're talking about um, finding where does it cross the x-axis? Like if you had a graph, if you have a graph like this and you have some sort of curve, let's say like this, um, when you're finding roots, 
zeros in solution, you're finding where does it cross the x-axis, these coordinate points specifically. And sometimes you won't be able to see them. Um, and so some of them are imaginary numbers and we don't know. And that's why the algebra will reveal to us all the x-intercepts, even imaginary ones. So in this case, roots, zeros, and solutions all mean x-intercepts. The next part, it says, if you have a factor x plus 5, then the root is blank. So when you're looking for a root or you're finding a 0, um, that's when you set your equation, so x plus 5. So you set your factor equal to 0, and then you're going to solve for x. So if I had to solve for x to get this 5 to the other side, I would subtract it over so x is equal to minus 5. That means that my root is negative 5, x equals negative 5. But let's say the, it's totally backwards. What if I gave you the root instead? I said x is equal to negative 8. Can you find the factor? Well, yeah, it's pretty easy. All you have to do is move this 8 to the other side. And so you would add 8 over to the other side, and this side would be 0. And voila, you are back, you are back to your factor. So the factor for the root x equals negative 8 is x plus 8. So essentially, it's basically these two are just opposites of each other. This one you're finding the root where you're solving for x. This one, you're just trying to make x back into a factor. All right, so kind of using the structure here, um, what we're gonna be doing is solving this polynomial equation. In fact, this is very similar to what you're gonna be doing for your project, um, kind of like uh, a sneak peek into what you're gonna be doing with synthetic division for your project. Your equation is set equal to zero and you're asked to find all of the x's. Now, I know that this x, the highest power here is x to the third, so I should have three solutions. Lucky for me, they gave me a factor already to start off with. So I have to check if this is a factor. If it is, then this is one of my factors, and I just have to find the other two left. And so uh, my goal is to, to factor this out into hopefully three factors so I can set it equal to zero and solve for x. So first things first, Let's check if this factor is a factor to this polynomial. So that's step one. So to do that, remember that I use synthetic division, set this guy equal to zero to, to find the x or the zero that goes in my box. So if I add four over, it looks like x is equal to positive four. My highest power is to the third. So I'm just going to label everything because I don't want to mess up. Um, it looks like x here is a one and then a negative two for x to the second, negative 56, and then 192. So these are fairly large numbers. I'm not sure if this is gonna work out, but we always pull down the first number, and then one times four, because I gotta multiply diagonally, gives me four, then add vertically, which is two. Two times four is eight, and negative 56 plus eight is, um, I think that's negative 48. So negative 48 times 4 actually turns out to be negative 192. So if I add vertically, these are going to actually cancel. So I get 0 for my remainder, which is great. So that tells me that this is a factor, so I can use that as one of my factors. Um, let's see what I have left over, though, because I will have to continue to factor here. So this is c, x, and x squared. So I really have... You write this to the side here. I think I will have some room, so I'll just write it underneath. So it looks like I have 1x squared plus 2x minus 48. And remember, x minus 4 is also a factor that has been approved. So this is a factor because I got my remainder as 0. So I can use this guy, and then this was what I had left over. So if I multiply these two, I'll get back to here again. But I don't want to because the goal is to try to get into factors. So I can set this guy equal to 0. So I pull down the 0 here and then solve for x. So let's see if we can um, factor this, this some more. So let me think about it. Two numbers that multiply to give you 48 could be, hmm, the only thing I can think of is maybe six and eight. So let's see here. Six and eight, do they add to be two? Yeah, I think I can make that happen if one of them's a negative. So if I were to factor, let's put some x's down, maybe an eight here and a six here. So if I think about it, this is a positive 2 on the middle. So that means maybe the bigger number had to have been a positive and the little number needed to be a negative. So when I multiply positive 8 and negative 6, I get negative 48, which is what I want. But when I add 8 and negative 6, I get a positive 2. 
in the middle, which is what I want. So these factors work, and I'm gonna bring down the x and the minus four now. And the other side is still set equal to zero. So from here, all I wanna do is um, set each factor equal to zero. So I can solve for x. So from here, if I add, um, not add, if I subtract over eight, that cancels. This one I have to add over six, and this one I have to add over four. So I'm trying to get x by itself, but it looks like x is equal to negative eight, x is equal to positive six, and x is equal to positive four. So it looks like I have three solutions. X could have uh, hit the x-axis at negative eight, positive six, and positive four. And there we go. We have our final solution. All right, let's try the next one here. So in part B, it's pretty much the same. You're given um, a polynomial set equal to zero, so you have to solve for x. And there are gonna be three x's here, uh, since the highest power is x to the third. And you're given one of the factors to possibly test out and see if it is a factor or not. So let's go ahead and test out this factor here. So this is a x equals negative five, so I know positive five will go in here. Um, if you don't know how I got that positive, um, five, just set your x minus five equal to zero. So you always set your factor equal to zero and then you solve for x. So you add five over in this case and x is equal to positive five. And so that's how I got this five that went in here. Um, you'll notice I basically just switched the signs. And so this is x to the third, x to the second, x, and then your constant. And so then you write the numbers underneath. So you have a four for x to the third negative three for x squared and a negative 100 for x to the first power and a 75. You're gonna bring down the first number like always and then you'll have the four multiply with the five so that makes a 20 and so that gives me 17 if I add vertically. So negative three plus 20 is 17. Uh, 17 times five, uh, I'm gonna double check that with my calculator. 17 times five gives me 85 if I add vertically this gives me um, negative 15. And then I'm gonna multiply this number with the five, which gives me uh, 75, negative 75. And so if I add, this ends up being zero. So this is a factor, this does work because my remainder is zero. So I have my constant x and then x to the second power. So my equation here is actually four x squared plus 17 x minus 15. So this is what's left over, and I know that this here is a factor. So let me scoot this to the side here and try to do the math over here. So I have this quadratic that I got from dividing, and then I know that x minus five is a factor. So I'm gonna set all of this equal to zero and try to solve it. But let's first try to break this down a little bit more. So this is x to the second power, and there's a number in front of the x squared. So this is where I probably wanna to try to slide and divide. So I'm gonna take the first term, slide it over to the last term. So this is the slide and divide method. If you've never learned this before, um, it's pretty easy to do. All you do is take your number in front of x squared and multiply it to your last constant here, or the last term at the end, so your constant. So this ends up being x squared plus 17x minus 15 times four is 30 or sorry, not 30, actually, that would be 60. So from here, I'm gonna to try to factor now, and it's easier to factor this way because notice this x squared now just has a one in front. So now I just have to focus on what two numbers multiply to give me 60 and add to give me 17. Well, I know two numbers that multiply to give me 60 are like, um, what would work? Six and 10 multiply to give me 60, but they don't add to give me 17. 20 times three I think would work. 20 times three gives me 60, but if I subtract the three, I would get a 17. So I think this is my winner here. So let's put the X's down. Let's do a 20 here and a three here. Now I need this to be a negative 60, but the middle term's a positive. So the bigger number needs to be positive. Smaller number needs to be negative. So 20 times negative three gives you negative 60, but 20 plus negative three gives you positive 17. So this works. But remember, you have slided, you have not divided out the number you multiplied. So the number I multiplied with is four. So I'm gonna divide both digits by four. 
Um, and so from here I have x plus 5 if I divide 20 with 4. This 4 doesn't divide with 3 nicely, so I'm going to put the 4 in front of the x, so this becomes 4x minus 3. All right, so now I'm going to bring down this factor x minus 5, and I'm ready to set each factor equal to 0. So I'm going to set x plus 5 equal to 0, x minus 3 set it equal to 0, and x minus 5 set it equal to 0. So if I solve, I'm just going to try to get x by itself. So this ends up being x equals negative 5 for the first one. So that's my first solution. The next one here, I have to add 3 over. That cancels. 4x comes down. This is a 3. I'm going to divide over 4. So x equals 3 over 4 for the next one. Okay, 2 down, um, 2 down, 1 to go. So this next one here, I just have to add over 5 to try to get x by itself, so not too bad. So x is equal to positive 5 as well. All right, so I have 1, 2, 3, 3 solutions, so I know I'm done because this is x to the third power. There should only have been 3 solutions. Okay, so when you're given a factor, what you have to do is you test it out and see if it actually is a factor and it can be a part of a solution. So once you use it to, to test it out, you also get the remainder factor. And so you're going to try to factor that even more if, if needed. And then from there, set all your factors equal to zero, and then you're able to solve very quickly. All right. In the next example, we'll talk about what do you do when you're given a root instead of a factor and how do you find the solutions for that.